anti-establishment protesters who call themselves the United Front of Tamasat and Demonstration organized another car mob today and read out their five key demands. They want the government to get COVID-19 under control, resolve economic issues, replace the 2018 draft constitution, reform the political, military and justice systems and the monarchy and restore the dignity of Thai citizens. The protesters are also demanding that government officials go on a strike and ignore all government orders, that the military and the police stop using force against the people, and that the private sector stop supporting the government. In the evening, more crowd control police officers have reportedly been deployed. Explosives have also been heard from the protest side, prompting police to fire tear gas in response. The Tamasai group announced immediate dispersing of the gathering on its Facebook page and that a new protest date will be announced later. Meanwhile, anti-establishment protest leader Ano Nampa's bail request with the police was rejected today, with police saying his temporary release would obstruct the investigation and there is a tendency the human rights lawyer and activist would continue his activism. Facing the charges of Liz Majesty and violation of the emergency decree over his repeated call for monarchy reform at the gathering last Tuesday, Anon posted a 200,000 baht bail, which was denied. He is to be detained at Bangkok South Criminal Court. Ten other anti-establishment protesters, including Parichiwarak, Panupong Jatnok, and Jatupadbun Patararaksa, are also being detained after courts rejected their bail applications. Nine of them were charged with illegal public assembly in a way which may cause public unrest and risk causing the spread of COVID-19 in violation of the Communicable Diseases Act and the emergency decree when protesting in front of Border Patrol Police Region 1 barracks in the Klong Luang district of Batum Thani province last Monday to demand the release of their colleague. Separately, the criminal court ordered the withdrawal of bail for Parit as requested by the public prosecutor. Meanwhile, Tadupat will also be sent back to Bangkok Remand Prison after his two-week quarantine at a correctional facility. Tadupat was arrested last Monday, a day after he led a karma protest with 30 other members of the Talufa group, but was granted bail by the criminal court the next day. After his release, he and his men had gone to Tung Song Hong police station to splash paint on it. The civil court rejected an application for an injunction forbidding the police from using rubber bullets against anti-establishment protesters, citing the necessity under the state of emergency to bring emergencies under control, but has instructed police officers to exercise greater caution. The application was submitted by two journalists who were hit by rubber bullets while reporting on a demonstration last month, complaining that the police's action violated the Public Assembly Act. The court ruled that the emergency decree currently prohibits demonstrations, activities or assembly in a congested area or incitement to do so. The Public Assembly Act is not applicable to the current circumstances, so the police have the right to perform their duties and choose the most appropriate means to achieve that, including the use of rubber bullets. The court also stated that there is no evidence indicating specific intent by the police to attack those working in mass media, in which case the latter would have access to justice under the criminal code without needing an injunction. The court also rejected the journalist's request for the court to prohibit the police from cracking down on protests as well, reasoning that members of the media do not have the right to file a motion on behalf of the protesters. Regarding a request to bar the police from limiting the area in which the media can perform their duties during demonstrations, the court ruled that it was the police's duty to provide security, including management of the whole area, with the aim of keeping members of the media safe. The court deemed it was not appropriate to issue such an injunction. However, the court did agree to issue an order to protect the media from physical harm by the police in future demonstrations, with the condition that they comply with the principles and guidelines for the performance of their duties and that cases can be filed demanding compensation from the state for damage incurred from the use of crowd control weapons.
Due to the current COVID-19 situation, with over 767,000 infections recorded in the latest outbreak beginning in April, Thailand's Modern Trade Confidence Index in the second quarter of this year hit the lowest point in three years, as retail businesses are being highly affected by the pandemic and government measures. Rector of the University of the Thai Chamber of Commerce, Dr. Thanawat Ponmishai, said that the index is predicted to continue to decline, reflecting the concerns of modern trade operators that the business is tending to get worse and that the partial lockdown measures and curfew may be further extended by the government. He also said that the economic cost of the lockdown measures may increase to about 700 billion baht. According to Ms. Telida Jansiripong, Cobra Relationship Director at the Central Group and a Retail Executive Committee member at the Board of Trade of Thailand, retail businesses in the past several months have lost an estimated 270 billion baht and the pandemic has impacted more than 1.2 million SMEs in the production chain of modern trade, which employs about 10 million people. Retail business for July fell to its lowest point in 16 months, adding that travel restrictions imposed during the curfew have reduced the transport of supplies, especially fresh goods, from their sources to stores by about 30 percent. She also urged the government to ease restrictions on retailers by allowing them to resume businesses in designated areas. Meanwhile, Mr. Surong Bulukun, an advisor to the Board of Trade of Thailand, proposed that the government increase the amount of support under the 50-50 co-payment scheme, revive the shopping to save the nation scheme, and raise the spending limit to 100,000 baht to support trade, which he claimed accounts for 70 percent of Thailand's GDP. He also proposed that the government extend the reductions of utility charges for households to cover the business sector and reduce taxes on land and construction until next year. Right. Yeah, yeah.